May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth and Kendra. Just receiving your great gifts, um, Kendra Roden is here as a guest organist and a pianist. And uh, her husband has to be, happens to be a pastoral colleague of mine in connections with Angela. And what a way to start worship. How beautiful um, is that? And for all uh, that is yet to unfold in worship, we're grateful to have you here for our friends online. Uh, wherever you are this morning, uh, you're in connected in community through the Spirit, and we give thanks for that. Uh, we are nearing the end of the season of Epiphany, um, and soon, very soon, we will move on to Lent. Uh, but before we do, uh, we take in this season to hear these words of God, that we are beloved, and we are also called to be love in the world. So the Gospel of Luke is our center point um, over this next year, and Luke never really lets us off the hook. And so a continuation of Luke 6 uh, today and Pastor Kristen, our newly ordained Pastor Kristen, is here with us today uh, to dwell in the text, and we're grateful for that. So as you are able, I invite you to stand as we open uh, with singing today. Worship God most high, sound every voice in earth and sky. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. We'll take a few moments now in silence for our own confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have failed to notice your presence in ourselves, in others, and our world. 
and pass by the places where you are being revealed. Accept our repentance and turn us again to you. Lift the cloud of doubt and fear so we may live in faith. Surround us with your abundant mercy and lead us to reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ you are beloved. In Christ you are forgiven. Go and be love in the world. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Pray together, loving Jesus, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Amen.
You may be seated. Thank you, Al. Good morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Jesus' Sermon on the Plain brings hard truths and harder work. And woe, do we have a challenge from Jesus this week, dear friends. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Don't you just love the way these lofty words roll off the tongue in the abstract? I do. But they certainly make me itchy when things get a little more concrete, when the rubber hits the road, if you will. In my day-to-day living and relationships with real people, like when someone cuts me off on a busy highway in a fit of road rage, that happened yesterday. (laughs) Or when a neighbor makes a snide comment about COVID COVID hysteria. Or when I sit next to a political foe at the state capitol or at the dinner table. Or spar with someone online. Or when a friend backs out of plans for the umpteenth time. Or most painfully, when a hurt from my past resurfaces, an old wound that has never quite healed. I love one writer, as one writer put it, for everyone else's enemies, I am full of love, just not for my own. It is so much easier to hear love your enemies as an abstract sentiment or a feeling rather than a call to action in one's own life. But in today's reading, Jesus isn't preaching in hypothetical terms. He's standing on a level patch of ground with the disciples, looking at them in the eyes and calling them to action. I declare to you who are listening, he says, love your enemies. This kind of love of which Jesus speaks is active. This kind of love is a verb. To those who belittle you and betray you and hurt you and hate you, bless them. Pray for them. Give to them. Lend to them. Withhold judgment from them. Be merciful in all things. This kind of love of which Jesus speaks was countercultural in Jesus' day, just as it is in our day, in our tit for tat kind of world. This kind of love is so hard that it can take one's breath away. It's so hard because it is the very mercy and forgiveness of God. Do as God would do seems to be the impossible task, the impossible ask. In light of our gospel reading today, I for one lost my breath reading the news this week. Consider Kimberly Potter and her fatal shooting of Dante Wright in Brooklyn Center almost a year ago. This past Friday, Kimberly stood up before the court and asked for forgiveness from Dante's family, weeping through her words, I am so sorry that I brought the death of your son. My heart is broken. She then received a likely 14 month, months of jail time, a sentence that outraged the Wright family and many others for its apparent leniency. In an interview with Aubrey Wright, Dante's father made plain his deep, deep hurt 
They were so tied up into Kimberly's feelings, he said, and what's going on with her that they forgot about my son being killed. How, I ask, are Aubrey Wright and his family to love their enemies and forgive, O oh God? And how, and how O oh God, will Kimberly Potter ever forgive herself? I have never been faced with such an impossible act of forgiveness, but I suspect at least a few of you in your lifetimes have. How are we expected to do the hardest of this hard work? I can offer no easy answers. Our families and our relationships and our society are so complicated. The hurts run so deep, and the trauma and the injuries inflicted by others take time to heal. Sometimes, even when we think we're over something right, an old wound is just reopened and fresh pain emerges, and the process of healing has to start all over again. That pithy adage, forgive and forget, makes for a nice sound bite, but it's rarely helpful when it comes to the stuff of forgiveness. In my own life, forgiveness, forgiving others has been less like a one-time event and more of a process, a process that isn't always linear and doesn't always come with a neat playbook. It takes time and prayer and an openness to what the Spirit might be doing even in the in-between times when things are just not settled. So maybe this, this invitation of the Spirit is at the heart of loving and forgiving one another as Christ asks of us. Because forgiveness is not about accepting someone's dysfunctional behavior or denying that it causes us harm, and it's not about allowing be abusive behavior to continue. It's not about pretending that our wounds don't exist. And it's not about holding back on our laments, our grieving, our fight for a better, more peaceful, more just world. But perhaps forgiveness does have to do with actively placing the harms and betrayals and disagreements and pain that have been inflicted upon us into the realm and tender care of God and trusting that God is with us, engaged in the hard work with us to turn something painful into something beautiful. Loving our enemies isn't about our own individual resolve. No, this work is made possible only through our relationship with a merciful and compassionate God. So I wonder, where are you finding yourself in the crowd of disciples this morning? Do you meet the gaze of Jesus as he looks up at you? Are you listening? How does it feel to hear such an unreasonable call to forgive in these COVID-weary, divided, and stressful times? Dear friends, are you loving and forgiving well in these days? Jesus may be calling, speaking to us this morning on a level plane, but he is calling us as his disciples to higher ground. We, as children of God, are made to be more than the ethics and the norms of our world. In Christ, we long to be the very mercy of God to all. Dear God, help us all in this hard work of forgiveness and loving our enemies. Lead us out from places of hate and fear Help us care for ourselves and one another in our healing. 
bring us to a place of freedom and forgiveness. Help us love and be merciful to all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Jesus' words continue to stir among us. We confess our faith of faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Last week, we had the first of uh, three videos that not only look back, but also look ahead. And um, we know uh, so much of what we do is fulfill promises that are made at that baptismal font. And we make promises on behalf of kids to know and celebrate uh, their call in the world. And that is why we invest financially, staff resources, and the commitment of all of us to that call. And so, uh, Part two of our story, and after that, I'm going to invite Rich Holloway, who directs our children, youth, and family, um, just to share some insights uh, from Rich's leadership as well. Hey everybody, I'm back from paternity leave. Uh, Sonny is doing well. He was born in December. Um, he's 
happy and healthy and starting this mile, which is really cool, and eating and sleeping and all those good things. With my time with him, I've been thinking about a lot of things, and one of the things I've been thinking about is baptism. His baptism is coming up. I've been thinking, what do I want out of his baptism? Why, why do a baptism? My hopes, my dreams are that he is named and claimed by God, that he um, is known and loved by the people that are here, um, by his sponsors, by his family, and the people of this congregation. Um, and I think that is what I hope for every youth coming through the doors of this church, is that they are known, loved, and appreciated for the person that God made them to be. And that's really at what is at the heart of faith formation here at Mount Olivet. And to do that takes intention, and so we're intentionally listening to anyone and everyone that can come to any of the listening sessions that are coming up in the um, next couple of weeks. And also, through those listening sessions, we're going to create a job description for a new children's minister, which is going to be really cool. All of faith formation here is rooted in those baptismal promises that um, each one of us promise every time we're here on a Sunday at baptism. Um, that we will be a part of these children's lives and faith development. And I'm just so excited to, to be on that journey with all of you in community. So thank you. just as you grow as an adult it's different in your faith but when you watch it in a child I think that just in general gives you hope they're just so pure and to really remember how pure God's love is um, just gives me hope for the future um, you know this might be cliche too but like looking at a rainbow and just remembering that God does bring us through hard times it gives us at least me peace to come here like on Wednesday nights. It just kind of recenters me for the next week moving forward. And it just fills, you know, fills my cup up so that I can keep going on. And just echoing how well our, our girls just, they like coming here. They enjoy it. They volunteer for things. It kind of gets them out of their shell, going on different mission trips before the pandemic and even during the pandemic. The staff here does a really good job of trying to Make sure there's something for everybody, every age, I feel like. Well, as you heard from me in the video, <laughs> Sunny is doing well. Um, just wanted to share, when he was born, I remember feeling two distinct uh, feelings. One was this overwhelming sense of love, this letting go of who I was before, um, and embracing life with this lovable, needy, sweet newborn. My second distinct feeling was more in the back of my head, humming constantly like all the white noise machines that I would soon be falling asleep to. This feeling could be summed up by saying, I can't do this alone. I don't name this out of shame, but more as a simple fact, I can't parent, parent Sonny alone. I need my family, my friends, and my church to walk with Sonny, Jess, and I as we skip, run, and yes, at times stumble our way through an ever-changing life as a family. In a few weeks, Sonny will be baptized. Like every baptism here at Mount Olivet, all of us will, be, will promise to be an active partner in his faith development, to walk with him in his life, to celebrate with him when he is skipping and help him up when he is stumbling. This is at the core of our faith as Christians. To see God in our neighbor, to care for each other, 
know about each other, listen to each other. This is how the Spirit moves through this congregation. These baptismal promises mean something, if only for the fact that we are saying with one voice, we hear you, we see you, you matter. You are a child of God. Where else do we promise such life-giving gospel? How else can we fulfill such important promises but together? It cannot be done alone. I love this church. I love its vision for the future. I love how it sees God as hope and justice in the world. I love that it does not shy away from hard topics and conversations. I've seen firsthand how we care for each other and how we walk with each other with love, compassion, and thoughtfulness. My deepest hope is that every child that walks through these doors sees this as well. Lessons on gospel readings and theology may soon be forgotten, but feeling, the feeling of being seen and known as a beloved child of God sticks to your soul. That is transformation. That is gospel. And that is what we are promising at every single baptism here at Mount Olivet, that you are loved, seen, and known. Each one of us has a role in fulfilling these promises made at baptism. So please, come to these listening sessions. These sessions are a place where we listen to each other's hopes and dreams for children's ministry at Mount Olivet. It is where we ask, what values does this congregation embody in children's ministry? Whether you are young or old, have children or don't, new to this community or have been here for years, these listening sessions are better with your presence. Your voice matters. Please come and share it with our listening team. Sign up if you haven't already. Imagine a community where children know in their being that they are seen by loving adults, where their trials and triumphs are listened to with care, where it is made plain that they are wonderfully and beautifully made in the image of God. That is gospel. That is life. Please come here, find your place in this vision. It is work that can only be done together. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership, Rich. Uh, we are now uh, going to share in our offering and share the piece together. Uh, for friends online, please uh, type your comments, your peace comments, and we'll join with you there. And um, for all of us here to be able to connect and move out of this sterile pose we sometimes sit in with our shoulders up and our masks on, to be able to look around and see this community uh, that Rich talked about. We're in this together. You saw those photos, so young and old. Um, we are a community together. So now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace from each other.
Let us pray. Generous God, you call us by name to join your work in the world. Reveal yourself in the gifts we offer here. May love be found in our sharing and living. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is Christ's table. Jesus is our host at this feast of abundance and grace that we might be nourished week after week with what we need to do this hard work of loving and of forgiving in the world. So come with open hearts to receive this gift. For those of you online, hear these words, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here in person, ushers will guide you forward. All wafers are gluten-free. 
In the cups, wine is dark in color and juice is light in color. Come now to the table of plenty, all is ready. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. 
Amen. We pray together, faithful God, you have revealed yourself in this meal as the one who feeds us, forgives us, and connects us in community. Send us from this table filled by your presence, ready to be loved in the world. Amen. So um, now that we have been forgiven and fed, heard God's story, uh, we pray with the trust that God is indeed present and moving in our lives, but um, we've had a chance to look around, whether it be online or here in the sanctuary, just what it means to be community. And I just hold Rich's words uh, that we can't do this alone, um, especially when it comes to forming faith um, in younger ones, that we need a community and they need to know that they are known. And so uh, with all those things about being known, and knowing uh, we come to this time in prayer. If you're online, um, invite you to type your comments in um, right now and uh, we will pray with you. So I will start with a short opening and then uh, first look to all of us who are here in the sanctuary. So let's pray. Um, God, for your gospel um, that awakens us to, uh, we're not done in this life it's not as easy as forgiving just to be forgiven. It's hard work. And uh, as Jesus spoke these words, it wasn't the first time, nor would it be the last time. Uh, but he also shows us that God has entered this world in our human bodies, feeling all the feelings that we feel of um, uh, regret, anger, um, what it means to hurt and be hurt. And God, just when we think that we can't do it, that it's this balance of um, get do this to get this, uh, you remind us uh, that this good measure is poured into our lap, so much so that we can't hold it within our hands. And that's why we continue to come and we worship and we receive bread and wine and this promise uh, that you're just not finished in this world yet. And so when we've given up, when we can't do it anymore, fill us with your grace. Um, open our eyes to look at our neighbor who accompanies us in this world. What do we give and what we receive? Um, this ongoing sense of what it means to be a part of your love in the world. So be with us now, especially in the prayers, the places where we're calling you to come close. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today for those of us who are here at church? Yeah, Nancy. Nancy. Okay, so Sister Kathy having neck surgery. Uh, we pray um, that that surgery goes well. Um, that sounds pretty invasive uh, for her healing and recovery, uh, for her um, slow and steady to uh, get back to what that mobility needs to be for you, Nancy, as you care and love for your sister and others as well. God, in your mercy. Angela. Yeah. So, Laura, uh, we are just holding you on our hearts right now. Um, as your dad has walked with Parkinson's and just has um, recovered over the last year or so, and now to hear this news of a cancer diagnosis. Um, so uh, we pray for love, Laura, that you have shown us and how that shows up um, as your mom continues to love and give care as all of you do and for your dad to know that he's held even though the future is unknown what is known <clears throat> is god is present um, so for each and every step and to know uh, your community walks through you during this time as well um, god we pray uh, for healing um, beyond what we can imagine not just physically uh, but the healing that we need for each and every moment. Let it be so, God, in our mercy. Yeah, Barb. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's been hanging on our hearts, um, all that's going on with the Ukraine and power and Putin and uh, supposed um, diplomacy conversations, um, who's na making the, the next move, all um, in the midst of people whose lives um, are threatened and jeopardized at each and every moment and what it means to feel safe and secure in this world. And God, we're going to keep praying, although we don't know exactly the answer. Um, but we pray, just as Pastor Kristen preached, that you will join us in this world, in those places, especially with oppression and power used to abuse um, and overrun people. Um, that there is that there is an answer and there is something next, a response beyond that. Uh, soften hearts, O oh God, uh, especially of those who hold power so much. God, in your mercy. Rich, um, a, a prayer of gratitude for your leadership and for faith formation. Um, and we also pray, um, you know, this ongoing sense of the movement on staff and this new called leader. We see how this happens, especially over this last year. Uh, for this next person who is meant to join us in our vision and mission here at Mount Olivet, um, so kids know that uh, they are known and celebrate that call and uh, who will accompany you in the amazing work that you're doing. For all of us to heed that call, uh, to be a part of this, this futuristic sense um, of what's happening here. God, in your mercy. All right, I am going to look online. Uh, Vicki Vicky Grandall, prayers for my aunt Elizabeth, who is moving into assisted living in a new town this week and is so scared and anxious. Help her to adjust and be at peace in her new living situation. Prayers also for my Aunt Nora, who fell and is 93 and healing. Heal her body as she can return home. Um, eloquent prayers, uh, Vicki, that I just repeated and uh, speak into this world um, in that time of transition to a new living space for those people who are so called uh, to welcome um, Elizabeth into this new community for her to feel safe and settled. And for Nora, that's a lot of years in a body. Um, and we pray for healing. God, in your mercy. Okay. Samantha uh, McLean, I want to pray for our family friend Marie Wagner as she enters the next step of Alzheimer's. Samantha, um, your family friend and ours, uh, Marie, um, such deep love for uh, Tony and uh, for Erica and Kara uh, who are walking this journey with you. Um, just uh, for compassion and love. Many of us understand, and uh, we continue to pray. Thank you so much for speaking with today. God, in your mercy. Okay. Bob Swanson, we are thinking of you. A prayer of strength and continued healing and a prayer of gratitude for the caring love of family and friends. Um, slow and steady, Bob, as your uh, knee heals from surgery. Um, we just know that we miss you and uh, we're with you in prayer in so many other ways for Donna as she comes close to you as well. God, in your mercy. Um, God, uh, for the prayers that we've prayed today, for those prayers um, that are still working themselves out, that you will come close uh, to that as well. Amen. few announcements this morning. Um, we, um, Ash Wednesday, it's coming, March 2nd. We will have worship in person um, that, that Wednesday, 7 p.m., a service of song, prayer, confession, and the imposition of ashes. We will also do imposition of ashes um, between 5 and 6 p.m. Um, while you can drive up and be seated in your vehicle and we will do that as well and we will also be live streaming that service so if you would like to um, watch that service online um, it will be available and then next um, just as rich beautifully said we have listening sessions for um, discernment in children's uh, faith formation coming up 
Our first ones will be this Wednesday, um, 12 to 1 via Zoom, and then also uh, downstairs in the evening. We need all hands on deck for this. We want to hear your voices. Um, so that that um, that is it for announcements today. Um, and then now we will stand for our final hymn. note before the blessing um, during our time between services for the next two weeks breaking bread a conversation about race oh my gosh these race conversations are polarizing and there is a pretty incredible video uh, that talks about people in all uh, aspects politically with police um, uh, about the impact and what this means and how we enter into these conversations it's really good and I invite you to join us in the fireside room um, as you are able so now receive this blessing. Beloved of God, be loved, be love. Amen. Christ is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. 